Today I wanted to talk about Kubrick figures. Some people might pronounce it Kubrick, but in Japanese they say Kubrick, so I'm going with that. Uh, these are, of course, Japanese figures in a style similar to Lego minifigures, but you may be able to tell that they're quite a bit more detailed in terms of their sculpting and everything, a lot more paint applications than the typical minifigure as well. And if we take, uh, for example, the most recent Gamorrean Guard figure from Lego and compare it to this Kubrick Gamorrean Guard, you can see they're a lot bigger and heavier and all of that. Uh, so, you know, it's difficult to make a direct comparison, but I think for sure, especially if you go back and look at some of the earlier Kubrick figures that they made, uh, you can see that they're directly inspired by Lego minifigures for sure. Uh, what I wanted to do today is to sort of show off my collection of Kubricks. I actually have quite a few <laughs> of these that I, uh, you know, I'm not going to show them all. I I'm mostly going to concentrate on uh, the Jabba's Palace set, or the Jabba's Palace related figures. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll take a look at a couple other ones as well. Uh, first thing I wanted to show you, I have here what's called the Medicom Toy Manual. Now, Medicom is the company that makes Kubricks or made them. I'm not even sure if they're still in, in production, to be honest with you. This uh, was released for the 10th anniversary of Medicom as a company in 2006, and it includes, uh, I guess, all of the toys that they've made, including, you know, one-sixth scale figures, uh, various, you know... One thing about Medicom is they have a huge range of properties that they make toys for, so there's a lot of anime and Japanese, uh, you know, Tokusatsu, they call it, the, you know, Ultraman-style stuff. Uh, they have some Kamen Rider, stuff like that, uh, Doraemon, all these Japanese things. But they also have a lot of Western things. Um, we're going to, let's go ahead and get to the, the Kubrick section, though. Let's see here. I believe it starts right around here-ish. Where'd it go? All right. So, uh, you know, we've got all of these figures that they've made for all of these different properties. You have Tron, <laughs> cereals, Kellogg's cereal, uh, Planet of the Apes, X-Men, all kinds of stuff. And so uh, there was a time for me, anyway, in the mid, uh, early to mid-2000s, I suppose, where I was kind of into collecting these, even just not related to Star Wars or anything. They had quite a few. In fact, the Alien set, I have, I think, all of those still, uh, including this awesome chest burster cane, which was uh, one of their so-called secret figures. They have all these chase figures in each set where, you know... Uh, well, I suppose that's one thing I should mention before we get any further, is that most of these were sold in blind bags or blind boxes. Uh, not all of them. Sometimes you can tell what they are before you open, but a lot of them were sold in blind boxes, so you had to just buy it, open it, and hope you got what you needed or wanted. And then they also had the chase ones, which were super rare compared to the other figures, and really quite frustrating to collect because, you know, you're almost never going to get them uh, naturally, so you'd have to buy them on the secondary market, and then it was not unusual for them to go for a hundred or more dollars. And even the regular figures themselves were not cheap, for sure. Back to the Future. Uh, you know, a lot of cool stuff, though, honestly. Uh, if you, if you like this kind of thing, it might be worth, uh, checking out what they've made. Of course, this is just until 2006, so they've Definitely made more since then, including what I'm going to show you today, which is the Jabba's Palace wave of so-called deluxe figures. So, as I say, I want to introduce the Jabba's Palace wave of Kubrick's first that was released in 2010. Uh, it consisted of six unique characters, and then uh, each one of those characters would come with a piece of Jabba and his throne for you to make sort of a build-a-figure out of. Uh, now, if you... You could buy them individually, of course, on the secondary market or whatever, but uh, if you were to buy just a case of, or rather a box of the uh, the Kubricks, you would get 12 figures, but they were distributed in kind of an unusual way. So you would have like three of these guys, you'd have uh, two of some others, one of another one, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know 
as we're going on how many of each you got in a box, but uh, the long and the short of it is that some of these characters were a lot more common, and of course that meant that they uh, went for a lot less money on the secondary market if you tried to track them down. So anyway, here we have C-3PO and Salacious Crumb. They're actually separate pieces, technically, so you can remove Salacious, although he's got a little bit of a sticking out section there on his chest, which goes in a hole in C-3PO's head. So I'm not sure if you'd want to display Salacious in particular uh, on his own like that, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, right now, I'm just sort of having having them be a set. Uh, you would have gotten, if you bought a, a set of 12, you would have gotten three of these. So he's actually the uh, one of the most common characters. And similarly, we have uh, R2 on his, in his uh, sail barge version there with the drink tray. This one also was three per uh, box of 12. I think it's quite well done, though. Next up, we have uh, Luke. Luke with his uh, Rancor Bone there. This would have been two per box of 12. There's Chewbacca in his prisoner version, I guess, with a little chain around his neck. This would have been two per box of 12. Finally, we have the two most sought after and most rare <laughs> versions of uh, characters. This is, of course, a Man Man who came one per box of 12. Pretty cool. And finally, the most unusual choice, I think, is uh, Bib Fortuna here who is also one per box of 12, which I don't really understand, because I think anyone collecting this Jabba's Palace wave would definitely have wanted a, uh, a Bib Fortuna. This wave actually included two chase figures, one of which was a red version of Bib Fortuna, and this isn't quite as random as it might appear. The uh, Lily Leddy version of the vintage Kenner figure back in the 80s actually, for whatever reason, had a red cape instead of the more brownish one that we're more familiar with, and it's actually quite a rare and valuable figure, so uh, they used that as the inspiration for the chase of this one. I don't have that figure because it's quite expensive, too. Uh, the other one, the other chase figure, I'll talk about in just a little bit. But in any case, as I said, each one of these guys would come in a box uh, with a section of Jabba and his throne. So let's take a look at that real quick, too. So the throne came in three sections that just kind of slot together like this. And it's pretty nicely detailed actually for this kind of thing. Uh, in addition, we've got a railing, which also fits on one of these, a couple of these pegs here. Oh, there we go. And we've got the hookah, which is quite nice, nicely detailed. We've got a little liquid there in the bottom. Put that on here. And finally, we have Java himself. Now, he was also divided into three sections. Now, uh, I can't remember exactly what part came with what. Maybe this railing came with one of the throne sections, because this is actually, of course, seven pieces, but there really should only be six. Uh, so he just kind of assembles like this with some pegs. And there we have it. It's a little bit of an unusual looking figure in some ways, uh, but I think it's pretty cool, and I like the paint job that they've done. Nice, uh, orange paint job instead of going for like all green as so often the case. And he also slots onto the throne with some pegs here if I can get them aligned properly. This doesn't stay together super well unless you have Java on there and then it's pretty good. There we go. So that's that. Now if we wanted to compare 
job, this Java with the Lego Java, they're not that different in terms of size at all. They're almost identical, but certainly different in style. Now, in addition to what I've just shown you, they also had, if you were to buy a master case, so-called, it was uh, four sets or four boxes of 12 characters, so you get 48, which is like way more than anyone would normally need, but uh, you know, a lot of people who were collectors at the time might have bought a master case and then opened it up to get just the, the chase and rare figures and then sell on the extras, so that was a pretty common thing to do. Anyway, if you were to buy a master case, you would also have gotten one cardboard backdrop for the uh, throne room, which supposedly, according to Medicom, was supposed to be used by stores as a display more so than uh, to end up in the hands of consumers, but I don't really buy that because there weren't that many stores that would have had open Kubricks on display. They mostly just had them in their boxes, even in Japan. And uh, anyway, the, the result of it was that that cardboard backdrop ended up selling for over $100 in some cases. I managed to get one for about 40 bucks, which I still thought was too much, but it does definitely add something to the whole display. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Before we do that though, I did want to show you the other figures from other waves of Kubricks that I am including in my Jabba's Palace display because there are a lot of pretty important figures that they released before they released that wave of uh, deluxe figures. One of which is this. This is of course uh, Boba Fett, but the astute among you may notice that this is actually the Empire Strikes Back version because he's got the green gauntlets and a different color backpack uh, as compared to the uh, red gauntlets and, and so forth, more colorful backpack that uh, we saw in Return of the Jedi. The reason I'm using this one is that the Return of the Jedi version of Boba Fett was actually the second chase for that uh, line of deluxe figures. I already told you about the uh, red version of Bib Fortuna. Uh, the other one was this, and because of that, he's really expensive compared to this Empire Strikes Back version, and it just didn't seem worth trying to get that one, so I, I'm just sort of substituting this. Um, I also have, for example, this uh, this Jawa from another wave that I'm just sort of including in there, even though he doesn't have the palm frond that he would normally have in Jabba's Palace to kind of fan Jabba, but, you know, I just thought it looked pretty good in the Jabba's Palace display, and I don't really have anything else to do with him. I also have Leia here in her slave outfit, or her hut slayer outfit, if you prefer. This is not my favorite Kubrick. In fact, it's one of my least favorite ones, I think, because she's so squared off and blocky looking. But, you know, it's a good character to have for a Jabba's Palace display. I also have the uh, Bounty Hunter version of her that I also sort of have on display with um, Chewbacca in his, you know, prisoner outfit. You can take off her helmet. I, I, I'm i pretty sure she came with hair at one point, but I'm not sure where it is at the moment. I always display her like this in any case. Of course, we can't forget about Jabba's favorite decoration. We have the Han and Carbonite block here. And if you turn it around, it's got a little uh, set of clips here that allow you to attach the actual Han, or defrosted Han, figure to it as well, which I thought was pretty cool. In addition, I have uh, Lando in his sort of uh, skiff guard disguise there. His helmet does not come off. But it's a pretty cool looking figure, I think. Finally, I believe it's finally, we have what is probably my most expensive Kubrick, or at least the ones that's the most expensive in the ones that I've just been showing you. This is, of course, uh, Yak Face, it, but it's a, uh, a chase figure from a previous wave of Kubricks. And this was uh, quite rare. Yak Face as a character has a tendency to be released as a limited edition kind of thing, or a chase, or, you know, an exclusive of some kind, and this is no exception. It took me quite a while to track this one down at a semi-reasonable price, and as I recall, I I never did find it for a good deal. I kind of had to just bite the bullet and 
and buy it at one point a long time ago. Um, but you know, I'm glad I have it now. It definitely adds something to the display. Finally, we have the Max Rebo Band, which they released as a separate box set. And I remember uh, I got this when I was in Japan uh, on business. I stopped by Nakano Broadway, which is a kind of a big area that has a lot of shops with anime and uh, toy-related things. It's a really fun place to go. And I found uh, this at a semi-reasonable price. At the time, they were going for $150, $200 just for this box. Uh, but it was it was much less than that. I don't remember what I paid. But uh, these are <laughs> definitely a must-have if you want to have the full Jabba's Palace display. We've got Max here in his organ, which is pretty hefty, actually. And he comes out. Here we are. It says 2004 Lucasfilm. These are getting a little bit a little bit dusty. Uh, we've got, of course, Sai Snoodles with her mic. We've got Droopy McCool with his uh, Chinden Kalu flute, as I recall, is, is the name of that, but in any case, uh, his musical instrument. And for some reason, they decided to include. Boda, but what is his name? Doda Bodanawido. That's quite a mouthful. Doda Bodanawido. With whatever this thing is. Uh, of course, he was uh, an addition to the uh, band in the special edition of Return of the Jedi. Not my favorite, but still kind of cool to have, I guess. So, uh, what I want to do now is uh, get out that cardboard backdrop I was telling you about and try and display all of these together and just see what the the whole display looks like. This cardboard backdrop is definitely reminiscent of the Power of the Force 2 Jabba's Palace cardboard display that I did a video about a while back. It looks quite good I think on display when you have all of your figures arranged on it. This is how I have them displayed in my office normally, although <laughs> they were covered with quite a thick layer of dust when I got them out here. So it was a good thing that I'm making this video, if only to force me to kind of clean this up a little bit. It's a little crowded looking maybe because I've literally put all of the possible figures I think that could go in a Jabba's Palace display in here, including, uh, well, we have Leia and Leia as the bounty hunter. Uh, we have, of course, R2-D2 with his drink serving tray, who was not seen in this form in the palace, but, uh, you know, I think it works fine. Uh, probably would be difficult to fit even one more figure in here, realistically, but uh, I'm really happy with how this looks. I almost forgot, they also released carded versions of a couple of these characters in 2013, so two or three years later than the Jabba's Palace wave was released. We have here, of course, R2 on, in the Jabba's barge version. On the back, there's not a whole heck of a lot to see, but it does say limited edition. Not really sure what that means. 15 plus, not a toy. Adult collectible. Hmm. And then we've got uh, C-3PO with Salacious Crumb. And I think that's a pretty cool looking card. Same on the back. So uh, that's pretty much it in terms of my Java-related Kubricks. I do have quite a number of the just regular Star Wars ones somewhere. I'm not entirely sure what I've done with them. The only ones I have on display normally are these Jabba's Palace ones, though, just because I don't have the space for everything. So what do you think? Uh, how do these compare to Lego minifigures? Personally, I like them both. I don't really think you have to choose between them. But, you know, there are a lot of kind of knockoff-ish minifigures out there, mini mates, um, mega blocks figures, and things like that. I always thought those felt cheap and, and didn't really like the looks of them very much, but these, in a lot of ways, feel like uh, fancier versions of Lego minifigures, so I, I do really like Kubrick's, personally. That's about it for today. Thanks very much for watching. As always, this video was brought to you with the help of my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all very much, especially the Palace VIPs right here and Angelica Brady. If you'd like to join our little group and uh, maybe get early access to videos, things like that, as well as help support the channel, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Click the link in the video description for more information.